Okay, so let me first introduce uh, the, the speaker for the closing keynote. And we have Celine Lemay. Uh, she has been a midwife for more than 30 years in Quebec and was actively engaged for legalization of the midwifery practice. She is the past president of Quebec's Midwives Association and actually a member of the board of L'Ordre des Sages Femmes du Québec. She has a back in nursing, MA in anthropology, and a PhD in applied human sciences uh, at the University of Montreal. She is teaching as a senior lecturer in back and pratique Sage Farm for 10 years at the University du Québec, uh, Trois Rivières, in Quebec, Canada. She has three children and four grandchildren. So over to you, Celine. Uh, uh, thank you very much, Alini. Yeah. Hi, everyone. Uh, do you hear me? Is it okay? So I okay. <laughs> um, uh, sorry for uh, my accent because I'm a French-speaking <laughs> person, but still, I um, I really want to share with you some of the things I I did recently. Um, so um okay let's let's go to do that so i want to consider the the evidence and the wisdom in professional reality of midwives so what's um what will will we go <laughs> uh i want to talk about the context and a problem uh, faced by midwives uh then why i did uh, start to a uh, review about uh uh, wisdom, which is practical wisdom and not philosophical wisdom. And in the Greek, uh, <laughs> many, many years ago, it was called uh, phronesis. So what is it and how how we we can talk about that? And finally, I want to, uh, to do some reflection for midwifery. And maybe I will sing a song to you, just... Uh, if I feel like it, because I think it's it's worth it. So what's uh, okay? What what is the context? You know, we we are living uh, mostly uh, in most area uh, in an increasing dominance of technicist imaginary realities in healthcare. You know, evidence based practice or medicine is a new paradigm. And it's, um, we can see it's a lot of guidelines and protocols and rules and algorithms and routines. But the reality of uh, midwifery practice is um, that midwives are facing two different injunctions. First, following protocols and guidelines, but and at the same time, providing a woman-centered, individualized care. So how can we do that? How to make the best decision for the patient? And how to, what is a good quality of care? Uh, so let's get into, um, let me see, evidence-based practice. Uh, it's a it's a very good example of technical rationality, which is the you know we can see that it's focused in procedures and protocols and start standardization of uh, of a practice. It has its own strengths because now practice can be based on science, but not just on habits and beliefs. Uh, which is not a uh, bad thing. And we can see how it was used by the, the, um, uh, by the Lancet uh, journal uh, and finally finding how midwifery and midwives are playing a key role globally for the health of women and, and babies. So it's, it's good. But at the same time, it has its limits because it doesn't recognize the inherent uncertainty and imprevisibility of any professional practice. You know, um, 
there's some kind of confusion in the language because evidence is presented as truth and as certainty, uh, which is scientifically not uh, true. Uh, we can see that uh, the relation of correlation is uh, often uh, interpret as a causal uh, relation. And we can see that um, the recommendations uh, are uh, interpret uh, as uh, prescript, uh, prescriptions. Um, we expect to apply recommendations and for me, it's like uh, what what um, the um, what is said as this manufacturing consent. We expect um, midwives to consent to use and to apply recommendations. And in fact, if you we just apply recommendations, it's the same thing as considering the woman as an object of care which is, for me, uh, the contrary of the, the ethos of my profession. Um, it uh, leads to a cookbook <laughs> practice uh, where you see that um, like good practice is determined before any situation, uh, which is bizarre. And it's overriding, you know, uh, individual. It's amazing how uh with ecological discourse we value diversity in nature in order to protect mother nature and mother earth it works for the the nature but it doesn't work for women you know it's like a convert belt and industrialized and productive uh, way of thinking about childbirth is uh, how come you know uh Physiology is about diversity and singularity, but it, 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 it's like it's uh, competing paradigms. Um, and then the, the guidelines are coming from research, uh, which are reductive and empty, empty of reality, because uh, it's about like in a laboratory. Uh, without any context of cultural, uh, historical, society for women. It's just, uh, you know, it's too reductive. So guidelines are like a map we, we have to follow, but in fact, the map is not their territory. We are working, working with people, human beings, uh, with a lot of uh, values and cultural and making meaning and searching meaning. So, so, uh, so um, often, like guidelines are, doesn't fit for midwifery practice because it's not uh, uh, our reality. And the standardization um, uh, leads to some dishumanization, not only of the patient, the woman, but uh, also to the carer. We are just providing care. Um, so, and the evidence-based practice is not suitable for complexity uh, and wholesome and individualized care. So what, what do we have to do? So it was time to look to have a look at the wisdom, which means practical wisdom of phronesis. So three three things happened in Quebec, where I live in Canada, uh, over the recent years. First, phronesis or wisdom, practical wisdom was mentioned in a PhD thesis to help the profession, midwifery profession to, ev to evolve and continue to, um, to flourish. And then there was a research on professional identity. And one group of midwives mentioned that uh, wisdom will have to be considered as the <clears throat> a con a content, a content value of all the uh, shared values of the profession, 
which was uh, very good. And recently, the order, the College of Midwives in Quebec, um, revised the standards of care and uh, mentioned specifically um, wisdom uh, and linking link to uh, professionalism. So they, they say that uh, midwives has to practice with with wisdom as a professional. It, Anne is the only one profession have mentioning wisdom in the clinical and in pro, as, as a professional. So this is three good reasons to make a literature review about wisdom in healthcare and in with all professionals. So um, I find out um, 37 articles, mostly uh, written uh, in the medical discipline, which they, they, they try, they, they want to have more wisdom in their practice. Very few in midwifery and just maybe two and two for nurses. So it, it was not a big, um, uh, it, it was enough you know, for me to be able to understand. So what is, how can we understand practical wisdom? What is the place in professional practice? And can we um, learn it? Can we teach it? Can we develop it? And can we cultivate practical wisdom? So uh, let's see. So you know it's it's a complex uh, con concept <laughs> which is a lot of discussed but uh, um, even if the understanding it varies a lot usually it's it's um, uh, conceived as a process and not a procedure to make decision uh, it's about using um, deliberation and discernment uh, during a situation, in a situation, in order to make the best decision for the good of the patient in a context and for the good of this person and in this concept. And I was surprised that uh, uh, the texts are talking about always the goal of the, the mean of the profession is to for the good of the patient and not the just the health so for me it's larger than just you know having a healthy mother and a healthy baby so that that was um, a, a good surprise for me it um, it needs that they uh, come from a deep comprehension of a situation uh, the context and the, the the situation and this particular person and it's it's a disposition you know to act in a in a situation where it is uh, uncertainty and is is certainly working with complexity as we do and it's a it's a form of knowledge you know for the greek uh you have three form of knowledge episteme which is science you know uh, and then you have the techni which is a skills and phronesis and uh, practical wisdom is a form of knowledge which is experience knowledge, knowledge from experience. So for me, it has a lot of potential. So what is this place? Uh, this, the place in healthcare, it was unanimous. You know, it's a central to meet the challenge of complexity and it has a key role to meet ethical challenges of practice, but not to use like formula, which sometimes we, we have rules, you know, for ethical uh, problems. It's not like that. It is an indispensable for quality of healthcare practice. It's, we need that. And it's sine qua non of a mature professional 
uh, and when there was a thesis about you know doctors um, talking about what is um, uh, practical wisdom, and they know they can identify uh, and recognize uh, what is a wise professional. I will talk to it uh, soon. Um, and it has a crucial role in all phase of L care, not just uh, maternity care or obstetrical in all phases. So it's a place to think, to feel, to talk, to discuss, to dialogue and make the best, you know, it's the, it, there's no certainty, but we have to, to, um, to, to, um, uh, reflect and and uh, before taking a decision, you know. Um, so how can we recognize? You know, uh, they uh, uh, all the texts are talking about virtue. <laughs> it's a virtue, which is an attitude and aptitude. So uh, there's a lot of things, but uh, we can I can talk about you know it's a kind of uh, emotional intelligence it's the capacity to say gray to see the gray which is very frequent in our practice it it is related to self-confidence the use of emotions uh, a person who is not afraid afraid to of change and innovation uh, and a person who know how to improvise because uh, if a person is, is, is a situation is unique, uh, the, the decision can be unique too. We have to create something. Um, it takes a receptivity and adaptation to a situation. It takes courage because sometimes it's, you cannot just apply or, uh, rules or, uh, the algorithm and all that. So you make the decision and it takes courage not to just to follow the, the troop. And um, this is a person who is want to talk and um, also communicate with others, which means it's just not uh, between midwives, but it's as a group. We can, they were taking texts, were talking about you know, uh, personal and professional uh, wisdom, but they are talking about um, a group or of, of professional that can value uh, reflection uh, around the situations. So, uh, let me see, sorry. So what is the place? Can we learn it? Uh, it's not innate. <laughs> we, you, we, we cannot be born wise. You know, it's not a theory, it's not a result, it's a process. And it goes uh, exclusively with experience in a working environment. You know, we, we cannot learn the theory and then apply the theory. It doesn't work like that. So it, it's a knowledge uh, which takes uh, time. Um, and we learn it absolutely by reflection on work, on beliefs, on dialogues, and uh, sharing stories. Um, I will talk to you about sharing stories uh, in a while. And so can we teach it? Because, well, it's if it's important and valuable, we should be able to uh, to learn it, but to teach it. Um, most of the texts, they say it needs to be included in undergraduate programs. They uh, have to, they, to teach students how to make decisions in uh, conditions of uncertainty and not to have the recipe, you know, what do we have to do? I know, I teach two students midwives, they all want to have the recipe. What do I have to do? And this is, a, this is tricky because you have to think, you have to be able to anal analyze and all that and feel. So it cannot be teach as a procedure. 
So, and um, most of the texts, they, they talk about the central place of narratives. So for the students to be able to, from uh, stories from the field, they can learn and practice to reflect on their own values and the emotion in the stories. And the best teachers um, are not theoricians. They, it comes from mature and experimented practitioner that should uh, share stories and come from the field and meet the students. So, and uh, when you have a clinical placement, you um, teachers need to create a space uh, for students to share and reflect in stories and feel safe as students, not to be judged because they are asking questions and don't feel that uh, they don't know, you know, they are not okay if they don't have the answers. Uh, wisdom uh, is not there for always finding the answers. It's not easy, but it's a way to put uh, in the best way the problem, to, to put the problem. So let me see. So can we cultivate wisdom? Absolutely. And this is where they talk essentially by reflexive practice. You know, uh, Sean was, uh, did a very good uh, and, and many others on, of re reflective, being a re reflective practitioner. And it's be being able to reflect uh, on action, but in action. So reflexivity is not, the same thing as reflection. Reflexivity is questioning the systems, hey gosh, and questioning oneself and his actions. And it's not easy, it takes humility to do that. And uh, we have to, it's about readiness to learn from experience and reflection. So this is the uh, valuing and more than valuing, promoting uh, narrative uh, uh, um, in, in practice, but in, in, uh, in the formation. Because sharing stories, then we learn the treasures in the stories. And experience is not only what happened to us, is what we learn from what happened to us. So this is a way just not, uh, okay, what happened in a, a report. No, 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 we have, to, it, it takes dialogue. Uh, and it's a way for flourishing as professional. And they say that uh, wise professional are more happy, which I was thinking about um, midwives. Um, and it can contribute to a working place, um, which can be and can, um, uh, decide to be friend of wisdom, you know. Uh, so let me see uh, here. So what can we say? What can I share with you? What practical wisdom and midwifery? You know, it can be a guiding force for midwives to develop the essence of their professional identity, which is being with women and then to promote health and normality we need wisdom we don't need to be just a good technicians and i i want to um no, i will say it later it's it's a very important um uh a way to value a ju judgment-based approach uh, versus technical approach of uh, profession and phronesis will honor the professional ethos of midwives while enabling them to use uh, evidence base. It's not to be against it, but evidence cannot, it will be inform my practice, but cannot determine it. I am the one who know this woman, who know the context, who know the situation, and will find with her 
uh, what, what will be a, a good thing to do. And it's about assuming uncertainty. We live in a um, intolerance to risk and to uncertainty. And I cannot, uh, if midwifery is welcoming life, <laughs> um, we have to learn to, to um, work and live with uncertainty. It's our uh, fundamental human condition. And um, it's about valuing your relational practice uh, versus procedural practice. And um, we value reflexivity, we value the sharing stories and discussion and dialogue, and mostly the fundamental role of professional judgment. Uh, we have to, it's, it's to honor, uh, um, honor the human uh, existential situation. It's not a, a problem. You know, problem-based learning is not helping us to, to, to value existential um, and physiology and normality. And it has a potential to, for emancipation for midwives. You know, um, uh, and, and it's not about fighting uh, the system or even if it ends, but it's about finding values. It's not about being at war, it's, it's a quest, you know. Uh, so it's, it's not against medicine, it's about uh, going through uh, roots of midwifery. So, and it's claiming uh the place of wisdom in midwifery care there should be more research and just finding going somewhere else and not just in the system or in the um, the box you know and uh, no it's not that oh oh i don't have Oh, I missed the uh, one of the um, the quote, uh, which I will say to you. On the other side of right doing and wrong doing, there is a field. I will meet you there. So for me, about wisdom is not looking uh, what is right or what is wrong. What's the best or we or them or this or that. The um, uh, binary thinking is not helping us. We work in uh, complexity, so we stay open and um, meet people to um, uh, share questions. Not always find, uh, you know, finding what is the um, the the best answer. So this is we have to honor transformative process because we are part of that. It's, maternity is part of a life-changing process, but I think working as midwives is changing us and is, is all, also transforming. So wisdom, uh, practical wisdom, it helps us to, to, to feel uh, that we are part of, uh, of, of reality of human life. So that's what I want to share with you. Uh, and uh, do I have the, ah, oh, this is the, what I wanted to, it was after. And do I have the, uh, because I want to sing something for you. Uh, do I have the words, the lyrics? This is me. <laughs> Oh no. Yes, I will uh, I will switch oh. it. In a sec. <laughs> okay. Oh, oh there okay. you go. <laughs> it's for, for you and for me and it's for us. <clears throat> okay. We shall be known by the company we keep, by the ones who circle round to tend these fires. 
We shall be known by the ones who sow and reap the seeds of change, the life from deep within the earth. It is time now, it is time now that we thrive, it is time we lead ourselves into the well. It is time now, and what a time to be alive, in this great turning we shall learn to lead in love in this great turning we shall learn to lead in love that's what i wanted to share with you <laughs> so thank you for listening to me so if you have any questions <laughs> thank you so much <laughs> Celine. i, I like have song. a question <laughs> from chris So I want to um, to uh, finalize the uh, okay. finalize the, the, the review and make an article on that because I think it's it's not always not uh, only important but precious for uh, midwifery wisdom. Thank you, Celine. Thank you so much. Okay. And, uh, Jenny has a question. Uh, how much is intuition connected to uh, phronesis? It's, it's a great part of that. Because it's, uh, it's because we, are, we have intuition that we have new questions and we are not sure that it's just this or just that and just following the routine there's something happening so for sure um it's it's a big part of uh being wise <laughs> and using wisdom <laughs> merci anita <clears throat> So I hope it's uh, bringing some something new and something hope with hope uh, and have the courage of uh, talking about and, and practicing wisdom between us and uh, between groups of midwives. Yes, go ahead, Portia. So, thank you, Celine. And there's an overwhelming wave of love for you. Oh, merci. <laughs> thank you. Yes. <laughs> this is about love, eh? It will freeze a work of love. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And yeah, I agree. Well, with what Sheila says, let us claim the French name for midwives, Sage Farm. Absolutely. Indeed. Wisdom. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Thank you so much.